says, for example, the combined firm what could limit and present future rivals, access to mattress firms, floor space, award sales associates, higher commissions on Tipper Sealy projects, so, products sold, or otherwise take steps designed to steer customers away from competitors, products, and toward Tipper Sealy's mattress. Okay. So as somebody who's used to sell this, I can say from experience, Pete this. When you go to a furniture store or you go to a mattress store, the first mattress that people are going to drive you to is a Tempur-Pedic mattress. They're going to try to get you in that mattress as soon as possible. Why? Because the kickbacks from commission is high. Right? Give or take with the adjustable base, it would run between $7,200 to $8,000 with the adjustable base. Baby, I'm getting $150 to $200 on that card by itself, not counting the commission. So, of course, I'm going to push that. Now, let's say that sale for a mattress firm actually went through. If that sale for mattress firm actually went through, if I'm a salesperson in mattress firm, I am not pushing anything Simmons, Beautyrest, or Serta. I'm not pushing them. I'm pushing Tempur-Pedic, Serta, I'm sorry, Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Stearns and Foster. That's all I'm pushing. I'm going to push that your way every single time because I know that I'm going to get a bigger commission based on that. So which means that Serta, Simmons, and Beautyrest are not going to get hardly any sales in those thousands of stores, meaning that their sales are going to get depressed, which also is going to affect the people who work for those companies too. See, there once was a young man named JB, and that young man used to sell mattresses. Yes, that's right. I sold mattresses and furniture. Uh, my first time I sold mattresses was when I was working for Sears. That's right. It's still around. And I was transferred to the mattress department. And so when I was in the mattress department, very chill atmosphere, by the way. I actually liked it because not too many people came in. And then once you made a sale, that was great. Like you can make like one, two sales in a day. You're good. So I sold mattresses. Now it could be from Beauty Resterns and Foster, Sealy, Serta. Uh, there was another new one. Um, I, I forgot the name, but it was those two brothers or twins. They created a mattress brand too, but that was right before I left. But a lot of it was mainly Sealy, Serta, Beauty Rest, Stearns and Foster. That was the majority of the brands that we had, right? So we, and Tempur-Pedic, the ones that we had to push the most were Tempur-Pedics and Stearns and Foster and the high-end beauty rest. Why? Because those made the most money and commission for us. Right. Needless to say, Tempur-Pedic and Sealy are were became part of the same company. Now it's called Temper Sealy. Temper Sealy is a massive company. Massive. We have a factory here, not too far from the Orlando International Airport. Actually, I actually went to the factory where they were actually building. Uh, Sealy's and Stearns and Foster beds too. And funny, funny fact, Stearns and Foster beds are handmade. And they even have a little tag on the end of the bed where the person who actually helped hand make the mattress signs their name. So each Stearns and Foster bed may have a different signature on it because the person signed their name on it. That's how high end Stearns and Foster is, right? By the way, I ain't gonna lie, those beds are hella comfortable. But 
With that being said, there was a purchase that Temper Sealy tried to make, right? Because under the Temper Sealy umbrella, you have Tempur-Pedic, Sealy Mattresses, and Stearns and Foster. That's what the company owns. But they also tried to purchase Mattress Firm. And it almost went through if it wasn't for those meddling kids. <laughs> So let's get into this story here. Um, let me see. I want to go into first this. So let's see what they try to do. And then we'll get into the blocking. see so this is going to be a good this is going to be a good one uh so says temper Sealy snaps up mattress firm for four billion dollars like i said temper Sealy got that dough they got that cash all right do you guys know how much a temperpedic mattress costs temperpedic mattresses are expensive not going to lie, though. I'm going to be honest with you. I actually really wanted Tempur-Pedic mattress because those mattresses are hella comfortable. But unfortunately, I can't afford it. And this actually goes into why I think every single person in this country deserves a very well-built mattress that's suited for them. But because of classism, then people really can't get the adequate sleep that they really should have. That's going to be a rant for a little bit later because... Yeah, but let's get into the story right quick. So it talks about Temper Sealy snaps up mattress firm for $4 billion. So this was back in May, okay? So it says mattress firm earlier this year ditched plans to go public, citing ongoing volatility in the IPO market. That meant it still needed to deal with the $1.2 billion in long-term debt and total liabilities of $3.5 billion it was carrying at the time of its IPO filing a little over a year ago. The mattress retailer has been tossing and turning for years now, as DTC companies have chased its market share with generous return policies and other enticements. The company in 2016 has been acquired for $3.8 billion by private equity firm Steinhoff International Holdings, then spent some time in bankruptcy in 2018 when it forged plans to close some 700 stores. For Temper Sealy, which makes and sells mattresses under private labels, as well as its Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Stearns and Foster lines, mattress firms, many stores will allow it to get closer to its customers, according to Temper Sealy chairman and CEO Scott Thompson. Quote, this combination will accelerate our growth trajectory and enhance operating cash flow. Mattress Firm has been a valued retail partner for more than 35 years, and we look forward to welcoming their talented workforce of more than 8,100 employees to the Temper Sealy family. Says Mattress Firm's more than 2,300 brick and mortar retail stores e-commerce operations, and sleep education and sleep tracking platforms complement Temper Sealy's DTC operations, enabling a seamless <phone rings> enabling a seamless omni-channel ecosystem that meets the needs of more customers nationwide. Uh, Temper Sealy expects to begin realizing various marketing and other synergies by the end of the year too and to realize at least $100 million in annual run rate synergies by the end of year four. So basically what's happening now is the fact that they try to buy a, real a retailer. And so it's really a cornering of the market, if you think about it. This cornering of the market really is, how can I put it? It's monopolization. That's what it is. 
And so when people talk about, well, capitalism, you know, breeds innovation. How is this innovation? How? Because if you're monopolizing, that means you're getting rid of competition. If you're getting rid of competition, therefore, how can anybody else compete in the free market? It cannot happen. So that's why. Excuse me. So let's get into what actually happened as well. So let's go into this. So four billion dollars to buy a mattress firm, which is crazy in itself. Um, so here is the primary story. So this is Federal Trade Commission unanimously, unanimously moves to block $4 billion merger of mattress giants. So here it is. It says the Federal Trade Commission unanimously voted to block mattress maker Temper Sealy's purchase of mattress firm on Tuesday. In May of 2023, Temper Sealy, the world's largest mattress supplier and manufacturer, agreed to buy the United States' largest bedding retailer in a roughly $4 billion deal. The Federal Trade Commission authorized a lawsuit in federal court to block the acquisition. The commission said that the proposed deal would suppress competition and raise prices for mattress buyers and give companies enormous power in the mattress supply chain. The Federal Trade Commission also said that documents showed that competing mattress suppliers would lose access to its most important retail channel. These suppliers employ thousands of American workers, it says. Through emails, presentations, and other deal documents, Temper Sealy has made it abundantly clear that its acquisition of mattress firm is intended to kneecap competitors and dominate the market. This deal isn't about creating efficiencies, it's about crippling the competition, which would raise prices on essential good that could lead to layoffs for good paying American manufacturing jobs in nearly a dozen states. Let me repeat this once again. This is capitalism. Don't come to me and go, oh, well, this is just corruption. This is just cronyism. No, 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 no. See, here's how capitalism works. And I've explained it many times before, but some of you are new, so it's okay. So capitalism basically is the private ownership of the means of production by either a, one person or a very small group of people. That small group of people could be just the owner and maybe a couple of co-owners, or it could be the owner and shareholders. But it's a small group of people versus the workforce. And in doing so, they exploit the workforce into creating profit, which the workforce largely doesn't have that much of a share in or doesn't have a share in it at all. Because everybody knows that the workforce's pay is in operation costs. And operation costs are factored in to revenue. And you're not factored into the profit because then the profit is taken up by the owners and the shareholders who do not engage in actually producing the goods and services. But you get to a point where you get so big that you do not have the ability to grow any further and it's like it's like uh, when you start to outgrow some some clothes. Well, if you start to outgrow some clothes, well, you gotta you gotta switch the shirt. You know, you you, 
You can only take out the hem and the pants so much. So what do they do? Well, there's a few things that they can do. Either they can change the raw materials and make get cheaper raw materials, which lowers the quality of the product, which a lot of companies do. Another thing that they can do is that they can cut costs, operation costs, by laying off employees. They can cut employee benefits, right? They can cut hours. So that's another way they can save money. They also cut corners when it comes to safety regulations. This is why sometimes it's more dangerous to work in different certain places. Another thing that they do is they also try to expand by acquiring the competition in order to expand their market share. But this expansion of market share by canceling out the competition causes what we call monopolization, right? Because now you have one store that really holds a huge chunk of the market. This is monopolies. And this gets rid of the competition. And that's how capitalism works because in order to grow, because capitalism requires infinite growth on a planet with finite resources, in order to continue to grow, you have, and that growth is required because a CEO legally has a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders, meaning year over year, you have to grow. If you do not grow, you're essentially disobeying the law. So by law, they have to grow the company. So let's say you grew last year 1%, where they're going to expect a 1% return this year. And you have to grow, meaning prices have to go up or something has to get cut in order for that profit to that goes into shareholders' hands in order for that to go up. And so them, Temper Sealy buying mattress firm was a way to grow so that the shareholders get more money as far as their, their dividends go. And so that's how capitalism works because you have to continuously grow infinitely, no matter what. And who suffers? Because competition suffers. The people suffer because, of course, the, what, what are they going to want to do? Look, look, look what it says right here. It said it would raise prices on essential goods and could lead to layoffs for good paying American manufacturing jobs in nearly a dozen states, meaning they're going to have to streamline the process, meaning what they call trimming the fat. That means less workers. Is the workers pay going to go up? No, no, not at all, because they're trying to streamline, meaning they don't want to spend that money. That money that they should pay the workers more for is actually going to go to the shareholders instead. That's greed. That's how capitalism facilitates it. So let's continue. It says the deal would have given the combined company 3,000 stores and 71 manufacturing facilities and was expected to close in the second half of 2024. Temper Sealy's portfolio includes Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Stearns and & Foster. Stearns & Foster is actually a very high-end brand along with Tempur-Pedic, just to let you guys know. Sealy's more of the middle-of-the-road brand uh, as far as cost. Says the deal was seen as beneficial for both parties by analysts because mattresses and furniture sales have slowed following the pandemic induced high when consumers splurge heavy on home, home furnishings. Mattress firm was already dealing with its own financial issues, including a 2018 bankruptcy. The retailer struggled with over expansion and online competitors, including Casper and Amazon. The FTC alleges that the reduced uh, com competition in the premium mattress space would harm the of substantial portion of those mattress buyers, working class, older adults who often rely on financing. Yes, 
a lot of the people who buy these higher end mattresses tend to be a little bit older, more established, right? The people who buy the Stearns and Fosters, the Beautyrest Black, or they buy the Tempur-Pedics are older people. See, here's the thing about mattresses. As your body gets older, your body changes. And so your comfort level changes. And so therefore you need something that's going to be comfortable for you. See, young people, typically, they, they, they can pretty much sleep on anything, right? But as you get older, you find that you, you need a little bit more comfort. And them cheap old mattresses ain't going to cut it. So then you need something a little bit better. But with that comes more costs. So this is why older people start looking into the Stearns and Fosters, the Beautyrest Black, not necessarily, well, sometimes the Beautyrest Platinum. They'll go into the more higher end Sealy's and the Tempur Pedics. And so, you know, that's why they typically go into those, right? Um, and sometimes the Serta, Serta, uh, I forgot what the Serta premium brand was. I forget. But I think Serta is along with Beautyrest. But the, the, that's the thing. Is that it's a lot of there's a lot of older people, and also they have to finance, right? And who typically has the better credit, which would probably be more older, financially established people, which means you may have somebody that's a professional that's been in a profession for a few years, you know, quite a few years, and you know, they've established you know savings and they have great credit, so then they can finance. An expensive mattress and by expensive mattress i'm talking about five thousand dollars plus right and so that's who our clientele was unless they were if they were young then they typically had to be somebody young who was affluent but for the most part our clientele 45 and up right if somebody young came in we knew they were going to get cheapo that's just how it was as far, especially when it comes to financing. So that's who it would ultimately be hurting. Um, it says the purchase could drive rivals, which includes Serta, Simmons, um, Betting, and Purple Innovation, Inc. out of business. It says, for example, the combined firm would, could limit and present future rivals. Access to mattress firms, floor space, award sales associates, higher commissions on Tipper Sealy projects, so products sold, or otherwise take steps designed to steer customers away from competitors, products, and toward Tipper Sealy's mattress. Okay. So, as somebody who's used to sell this, I can say from experience, Pete, this when you go to a furniture store, or you go to a mattress store, the first mattress that people are going to drive you to is a Tempur-Pedic mattress. They're going to try to get you in that mattress as soon as possible. Why? Because the kickbacks from commission is high. Right? We not only got bigger commission, but they will also give us bonuses based on how based on the Tempur-Pedic mattress that we would sell. So you got that for Tempur-Pedic, you got that for Stearns and Foster, and you got that for, I think you got it for Beauty Rest Black too. You may have got it for Serta too, but I can't remember. But I know you got it for Beauty Rest Black, um, Tempur-Pedic, Tempur and Stearns and Foster. And we literally, man, I wish I still had the card, but I literally had a card where whenever I sold a Tempur-Pedic, I would get kickbacks from it. And if I, let's say hypothetically, I sold a, a, a higher end Tempur-Pedic um, advanced mattress. Uh, let's say they included the adjustable base. Um, it didn't need a box frame because it has the adjustable base and it was, let's say medium or, or soft, right? Right. Because they're either a side sleeper or a back sleeper. Uh, 
give or take with the adjustable base, it would run between $7,200 to $8,000 with the adjustable base. Baby, I'm getting $150 to $200 on that card by itself, not counting the commission. So, of course, I'm going to push that. Now, let's say that sale for a mattress firm actually went through. If that sale for mattress firm actually went through, if I'm a salesperson in mattress firm, I am not pushing anything Simmons, Beautyrest, or Serta. I'm not pushing them. I'm pushing Tempur-Pedic, Serta, I'm sorry, Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Stearns and Foster. That's all I'm pushing. I'm gonna push that your way every single time because I know that I'm gonna get a bigger commission based on that. So, which means that Serta, Simmons, and Beautyrest are not going to get hardly any sales in those thousands of stores, meaning that their sales are going to get depressed, which also is going to affect the people who work for those companies too. See? Because I'm not going to be pushing them. And I'm I, look, the first, the moment you come in that door, I'm laying you on a Tempur-Pedic. I'm laying you on a Serbs and Foster. Because I want you to feel what you're not miss, what, what you're missing. That's how they do it. They will have you lay on a Tempur-Pedic or a Stearns and Foster to see what you're missing. And then as you go, they'll put you in a worse and worse and worse and worse mattress. And then by the time you feel that mattress that maybe costs 400, 500 bucks, you're going to be like, man, I really like that Tempur-Pedic though. And then that's when they go, there's financing available. Oh, baby, I know how the game is played because I played it. And then they'll try to explain to you how it's a proprietary product. The tempered material has been developed by scientists at NASA and all this and that. So I'm going to be real honest with you. You know, that's part of the argument, too. It would literally depress and take out other workers in different companies. It says in a statement, Temper Sealy said that the bedding industry is highly competitive and only a small fraction of brick and mortar storefronts are mattress firms. It also believes a litigation process will be complete in the next few months and it still expects to close the transaction in late 2024 or early 2025. It says Temper Sealy has been working constructively with the FTC to secure regulatory approval for this transaction and it's disappointing that the FTC has initiated litig litigation. We appreciate the efforts to understand the industry and the proposed transaction, but ultimately believe the FTC's perspective does not reflect all the relevant facts and law. Of course they will say that. It says a mattress firm similarly said it was disappointed in the statement and it continues to believe that the transaction with Temper Sealy would be beneficial to customers and employees as well as the overall bidding and furniture industry. Of course, you know, um, It, that's a whole bunch of baloney. So let's get into the nuts and bolts, the numbers. So I'm going to share with you guys the profit making of beds, because a lot of people don't realize this. When I worked at Ashley Furniture, I used to work at Ashley Furniture Home Store, right? One of the things that we, one of the number, if you go to any person that works in a furniture store, the one thing that you are pushed to sell is a mattress. You sell a sofa, cool. Especially if a sofa has, you know, uh, it has electric reclining and all the bells and whistles. Cool, great. If you sell a bed set, a bedroom set, that's cool too, because that means a mattress is involved. If you sell patio set, cool. You know, if you sell individual pieces, I right, fine, right? But the mattress, that's where the money is made. That's when your metrics go up, okay? Your sales metrics. So I'm gonna share this as well. 
because a lot of people do not realize the profits margin for mattresses. The profit mattresses, the profit margin on mattresses is ha ha ha. It is ha ha ha. Okay. Um, okay. So let me see. It says market value that mattress industry market value is expected to increase 64 billion by 2030. Um, so this was back in April. Says the mattress industry is a lucrative and stable one. Everyone needs something comfortable to sleep on, but that doesn't mean it's an industry immune to market changes. Top mattress firms still need to have their finger on the pulse of current events and consumer demands to stay up top of mind of their customers when it comes to getting a good night's sleep. The only time you you actually could talk think about your mattress is when you're uncomfortable. To be honest with you, uh, so says the global 2024. Revenue of the mattress market is three thirty-eight point nine seven billion, and its annual growth rate stands at four point nine two percent. This is the largest market size and high market growth. The value of good sleep isn't lost on customers. Now, I want to share this. So that's the part about the profitability. I'm going to increase the size of this because I want y'all to see this very closely. Profitability says the U.S. mattress market follows the global trend of a 40 to 50 percent profit margin, which is significant compared to other retailers such as grocery stores that operate with a profit margin of about 5 percent. I'm telling you this right now. Mattresses make buku money. So basically meaning profit margin is the cost of the product minus the sale price. So it may cost it may cost $500 to make this mattress. But we're going to sell it for a thousand, right? Not we're going to make five hundred bucks and we're going to sell it for five fifty, or we make it five hundred bucks, we're going to sell it for six hundred. No, 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 no. If we're going to buy this mat, if we're going to make this mattress and it costs us five hundred dollars to make this mattress, we're selling it for a thousand. Or sometimes it's even higher than that. I've seen where you can purchase a Tempur-Pedic mattress from like those of us who are salespeople, we can actually purchase a high-end Tempur-Pedic mattress for what, $1,200? But that same mattress costs close to $5,000. They will sell it to people for $5,000 and yet we're getting it for $1,200. We're getting it almost a fifth of the price. We're getting it like 70% off because we're selling it. And Tempur-Pedic is not really making much on it by selling it to us. But to you, the consumer, oh, they're, they're, they're jacking up the price. So this is why I talk about, you know, that 40, for 50, 40 to 50% profit margin, they're making tons of money tons of money off of you right who sells the most mattresses in the united states mattress firm makes the most mattress sales in the u.s as the number one retailer of temper sealy average ticket price for mattress the cost of a mattress ranges between three hundred and five thousand dollars, depending on the mattress size, materials, and quality. The average spend per customer is seven hundred and fifty-four dollars. So, this is why mattresses are so expensive because of the the profit uh, the profit margins. Now. 
I want to go over right here. You guys kind of know where I'm going with this. Let me see. I have it here. Oh, I remember. Let me go into my notes really quick. Ah, uh, here. Where is it? Man, I put a lot. Of, I put a lot of notes in here. Um, oh, got it. Sorry. <laughs> Wanted to share this. So let's talk about who really owns Temper Sealy. This is Temper Sealy International, right? Forty-six dollars a share. Selling that. And who's go share class shareholders? So the first top is Select Equity Group, Vanguard Fiduciary Trust Company. They own 9.25% of the shares, valued at $761 million. BlackRock, they own 8.16% of shares of Temper Sealy. Valued at $671 million. State Street Corporation. They own 3.61% of Temper Sealy stock. Valued at $297 million. Right? So just to let you guys know, the people who basically own a piece of everything also own a piece of Temper Sealy. And so when it comes to this being blocked, I say good, but I think it should go way past that. I think companies like Temper Sealy, um, companies, number one, they should be broken up. Number two, they should be turned into worker co-ops. I think companies like Serta, Simmons, that owns Beautyrest, they should, uh, they, they should be turned into worker cooperatives. They all should be worker owned. And that profit should be disseminated among all the workers. Now, one more thing I want to talk about. I think it's inconscionable in this country that people in this country are not able to get a good night's rest because of them having a crappy mattress. I think that it should be that anybody and everybody in this country should have a comfortable mattress to sleep on. One of the reasons why some of us are so irritable, so angry, is because we're not getting enough rest. We don't get enough sleep. And in doing so, because of this system, then in order to get good sleep, we literally have to put ourselves in debt in order to do it. I do not agree with that. I think that a good, great mattress that is good for you because it's also part of your health, also you deserve to have. Now, uh, you know, you should not have to spend five, six, seven thousand dollars on having a high end premium mattress. I do not think that that's that's right. So when it comes to proper sleep. I think that having changing the system also means that health wise, which also is part of prevent prevention against diseases would also help. And taking over these companies and making them worker owned so that the if the workers work for these companies, they should be able to afford all their mattresses. And I think that these companies and corporations really should not be taking in all these profits. I think it should be shared among the people, the people who actually create these products. So the people who work at that, that, that Sealy factory, not too far from the, from OIA, y'all should be having profit share and also democratically running that factory. Meaning you need to vote on 
who your management is, who are the people who are coordinating everything, and then also vote on the operations and how things go at that factory. And then when it comes to the profits, you guys should be seeing that on your paychecks. Not, not the shareholders, not the CEOs. If you're going to have a CEO, it's somebody all of you guys vote for, and you all choose the salary of the CEO collectively as the company. That's how it should be. And the CEO is a servant, should be the servant of the workers, not the other way around. So I wanted to get into that, too, because I think it's deeply important that we talk about how capitalism really has ruined sleep. It's ruined sleep. And people really, uh, we need to change the system so that people can get better rest. Because really, sleep is also about mental health, too. Trust me, I know. I literally went to a hospital because I was so mentally and emotionally exhausted that I thought I was having a panic attack and I had to go to the hospital because I wasn't getting enough sleep. Trust me, I know. So this is how important it is. And in a company that that makes money off of something that is essential for us, which a mattress is essential for each person, It should not cost that much. It should not be that expensive. You should not have to take out almost a a damn mortgage just for a bed, for a good bed. So, yeah, that was my rant. And please make sure to, if you guys can get good sleep, try to get the best matches you can, but do not put yourself in debt or extreme debt for it. But that's why the system needs to change. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further, so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash JVFon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.